The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
the love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Knowing how easy it is to wander from the paths of right living, aware of all the shadowed valleys we wander, remembering how we have failed to place trust, our trust in God, how can we not come to God with our confessions? Please join me as we pray, saying, Comfort of your people, we confess the emptiness of our souls, which sends us searching for all those things which cannot nourish us, our restless longing for the goods of the world fill us with every lust and envy. Our belief that still waters are stagnant causes us to thirst for whitewater thrills and adventures. Our trust in the hollow promises of our culture turns us away from the shelter you offer to us. Forgive us, goodness incarnate. Call us back from our wayward lives so we may find rest in the stillness of your gentle heart we may find healing from your scarred hands. We may find that life for which we yearn, together in you and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is the good news. God will walk with us in every moment. God will fill us with goodness and mercy. God will bring us home to live forever. Anointed with grace and forgiveness, our lives overflow with love for all people. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Around us, our brothers and sisters are gathered from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. Share the steadfast love of God and community as the peace of God is passed. And know that if you are on your own, the peace of God is with you always. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and for guide us into your fold. Forgive us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I don't like being called a sheep. There's a song that we sometimes sing in Sunday school that goes, I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. It bugs me. I'll admit that. It shouldn't it bug me? There's nothing really wrong with the message on that song. I just, I don't know. We've been taught as kids and probably you experience it in school that when somebody calls you a sheep, it's not a good thing. It means you're just a follower and you don't really have a mind of your own and it's not a positive thing. Don't worry, it doesn't change when you're adults. There's a lot of people calling each other sheep right now and it's kind of ugly out there. 
So what does it mean when we have a shepherd? Because today is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a Sunday where we celebrate Jesus as our shepherd. All of our readings have that in mind, and a lot of the music we picked um, has that message. Even my sermon you'll hear in a little bit, that also has a message of Jesus as our shepherd. What does that mean? Well, it means that in spite of how much we think of ourselves, in reality, we do need to be guided. We do need somebody to show us the right way. Because we sometimes forget, actually, not sometimes, we often forget where we should go or what we should do. And sometimes we can be sheep in the negative sense and we follow the wrong direction. Actually, in the passage we'll hear from the gospel, they talk about hearing well, actually, it's not in the gospel reading, but it's a little earlier from the text that we have. They talk about hearing the wrong voice and following the wrong person. Well, and that can happen really easily. We all know that. We have a friend that leads us the wrong direction or a group of people, whatever it might be. Well, in this case, we, and because of that, I should say, we do need a shepherd. We need somebody to guide us. And we need somebody to lead us out of dangerous times. And we need that shepherd to come and find us when things don't go very well. That's why we call Jesus the shepherd. That we can get like sheep and we can go the wrong directions and we can do the wrong things. And if left on our own, we'd go down paths that, you know what, would be really bad for us. But Jesus comes. We hear that story. It's not today, but we hear others at, at different Sundays and if, it, it, about Jesus as the shepherd who comes and looks for the one sheep. He trusts that the 99 will be okay for a while on their own, and he goes and finds sheep, the one that was lost. That's what Jesus, the shepherd, does. And oftentimes, we can be that one sheep that gets lost. And we could get lost a hundred times. And unlike any other shepherd, Jesus would never give up. Would always come for us. Always come for us. That's pretty amazing. So when we're called sheep, that's a bad thing in terms of how easily we get swayed by things in our life that we really shouldn't follow or things that will be bad for us. But there's a positive it also means that we have Jesus as our shepherd who will guide us to life, guide us into the ways of love, and help us to share that love with others. So from that, if we think of being a sheep that way, it's not so bad when we look at who our shepherd is. We just kind of have to remember to listen for his voice rather than the voices that would guide us into the valleys of darkness. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we know that we can be sheep and what that means, that we can be led down paths we shouldn't be led into ways that are dangerous for us. We know that we can be sheep and that it will harm us, but we also know who our shepherd is. And if that if it means to be that we are sheep in order to follow Jesus, our shepherd, then what a blessing that is. Help us to listen for his voice and where he leads into the ways of love and life and in service to others. May our hearts and our ears be open to where our shepherd guides. Amen. So next time somebody calls you a sheep, say, hey, I'm not a sheep. Well, I am a sheep, but not the way you think, because I know who my shepherd is, and my shepherd is the one who leads to life. So have a good week, stay safe, and we'll talk again soon. A first reading from Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Ines, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, 
By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John chapter 3 verses 16 to 24. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading today is taken from St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As far as God is concerned, no one is useless, discredited, or cast away. Today, Jesus also tells us, peace be with you. You are precious in my eyes. Peace be with you. You are important for me. Peace be with you. You have a mission. No one can take your place. You are irreplaceable, and I believe in you. These words were preached by Pope Francis on April 11th and were part of my devotional reading on April 20th. I have often found great wisdom in his theology and it seemed to fit the Sunday so perfectly. I couldn't pass up using it. As you may have noticed, our readings all reflect Jesus as the Good Shepherd. This Sunday is called Good Shepherd Sunday and celebrates Jesus as the shepherd of our lives. Of course, Jesus is not like any human shepherd. Even the most compassionate shepherds, who care deeply for their flock, still see their animals as a way to derive a living. Whether they use the wool or the meat or sell the young, the shepherd gains their livelihood from the animals in their care. It is in their best interest to keep the sheep safe until it is time for the sheep to be used. But it also means the shepherd needs to make difficult choices. If one sheep is lost, They may be able to go search for it, but never at the expense of the rest of their flock. That math simply doesn't make any sense. As we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, we celebrate Jesus as a shepherd, but unlike any human shepherd. For Jesus, we are not seen as a means to an end. Rather, Jesus cares for us just as we are, for that is how we were created. Jesus protects us and seeks us out even when we go astray, even when that means searching when anyone else would have given up the lost for good. For Jesus, the Good Shepherd, all are precious and worthy of love. And this leads me back to the passage from Pope Francis. As far as God is concerned, no one is useless, discredited, or cast away. Today, Jesus also tells us, Peace be with you. You are precious in my eyes. Peace be with you. You are important for me. Peace be with you, you have a mission. No one can take your place. You are irreplaceable, and I believe in you. I can think of nothing that defines the actions of Jesus, our shepherd, our savior, so completely and so concisely. And I cannot think of words that are more needed than right now. I think it would be fair to say that we all feel like a lost sheep these days. We all need to feel again the comfort that comes when we are found by our Savior and gathered again in arms of love. We need to know the inspiration that comes from that love so that we, in turn, can share that love to others. Perhaps that last point is the most important. It is one thing to say that we believe our Savior will come for us in our times of darkness and bring us home. It is something else to say, something else entirely to say that we will, in turn, share that love with everyone around us. In the early days of this pandemic, I really started to see the best in a lot of people, 
Yes, there were those who hoarded, and there was a lot of fear, but we did what we had to do, and we supported one another, and we got through that first wave. We showed what love could do when it was applied to our communities. Now, a year later, it is a different story. We seem to have forgotten what we need to do to love one another. Anger, frustration, and mistrust rule too many hearts. We forget the love that our Savior has shown us all our lives and continues to show us. It was the love that claimed us in the waters of our baptism and from which the Apostle Paul states nothing, not even death, can separate us from. We are called to share that love, yet what do we see? More and more people demanding their lives restored in the face of this pandemic, even though such a full restoration would mean the end of more lives than we can possibly imagine. I look to India to see the horrors that this pandemic can still visit upon us. Yet many scream about their liberties, uncaring of the human cost. We see more people of color shot down in the USA, even after Derek Chauvin was convicted and there seemed like a new chapter in, the US, in US history was about to begin. What it amounts to is perhaps simpler than we realize and is likely the root of our hate and our selfishness and the horrors that are part of this world. We cannot see the other, no matter who they are, with the absolute love and grace that God can. In part, that is because we are imperfect beings and we will always fall short of that lofty goal. But on the other side of the equation is that, is that this act of loving so unconditionally is hard. And it means overcoming assumptions and biases we have towards others. And that is hard work. It is easier to fall back into destructive patterns of mistrust and even anger and hate and then find justification for doing so. The more difficult the situation, the easier it is to fall back into those old patterns, even though the situation would call for love and acceptance and a spirit of unity. If we can take anything away from the Good Shepherd Sunday, it should be two things, really. A renewed sense of how much God loves us and how nothing will stop our shepherd God from coming to us and bringing us home. That should give us deep comfort. But it should also lead us to want to offer that same peace to the world around us. If we as sheep recognize the shepherd's voice and know what it means, or that it means life and wholeness, would we not want to, others to know that same life and wholeness? The constant human atrocities and selfishness and hate would die away if love governed our actions. The same love our shepherd offers us each day of our lives. So I want you to try something this week. I will try it too. I want you to look at someone who has been difficult for you to love in the past. Perhaps they hold a different view about world events than you. Perhaps they are of a different political stripe. Perhaps they are from a different cultural background. Maybe they look different than you or sound different than you. Maybe they are too loud or too quiet. Whatever the reason, look at them and try to do so with eyes not of frustration or of dislike, but out of love, out of God's love, that same love that God gives us so freely. The same love that Pope Francis so beautifully expresses in the passage I shared earlier. It won't be easy. Trust me, it will be a difficult process on my end as well. But it is a necessary one because if we can learn to look in love on one person who we have had a hard time loving, then perhaps we can see another that way and then another. If we can see them in love, even if they have hurt us and may dislike us in return, then we can begin to understand a little more what God does for us every single day of our lives. Every single day. There is no hate in God's heart, for God is love. Thus I challenge you to practice loving another who has been difficult to love. I challenge you to pray for them in love. The Good Shepherd has laid down his very life for us. And he has done this when we were not worthy of such a sacrifice, save for the fact that we were the shepherds, we were and are the shepherds' beloved. May that come to be the single most important reality in our lives.
and may it inform every word and action to everyone around us, now and throughout our lives. As far as God is concerned, no one is useless, discredited, or a castaway. Today, Jesus also tells us, peace be with you. You are precious in my eyes, peace be with you. You are important for me, peace be with you. You have a mission, no one can take your place. You are irreplaceable and I believe in you. So in those words, go and serve in love. Amen. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. 
Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promised to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving Shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious Shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hope-giving shepherd, nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need. Today we remember especially all those who suffer, whether in mind, body, or spirit, remembering Vanola Anderson, Anita Holtz, Janet Plystead, Art Balkin, Trent McDonald, and those we take a moment now to remember in our hearts and minds. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We continue, O Lord, to pray during this time. Our hearts are wearied. We have prayed for so long, hoped for so long. May you continue to grant us patience, continue to grant us compassion, continue to grant us hope that one day this will be done. And in the meantime, May we follow the voice of our shepherd into the ways of love. May we seek to serve our neighbor. May we see them in love as you see us in love. May we see them as precious as you see us as precious, as you see all people as precious. Help us not to forget what it means to be your disciples. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God and community, holy and one, may we never be apart from you even as we pray as we are taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in our service again today. Lois for her playing, for Colleen, Carol, and Karen for their lovely singing for Susan and Lisa and their prepping of the video, or of the service bulletin, and for Ava for her reading. Thank you all. I would like to encourage you to continue praying for our leadership here, for the council and other, other members and, and staff who take leadership roles here in this church. It obviously has not been an easy 13 months. That goes without saying, but right now, in the midst of what's looking like a really nasty third wave. We continue to wrestle with how to go forward, what our next step is. Now we've tried many things over the course of this pandemic, some things that worked for a while and then faded, other things that didn't really find an uptake and other things that have been very successful. We continue to try and find that right balance of what the congregation would like versus what isn't really that important. But I do know that in the end, what we're missing most is being together, physically being together. Now, while we can't quite do that yet, I hope the day is coming closer where we can, as more people are getting vaccinated and becomes a little safer for us to gather. But as we continue to look to see what day and what time it is safe to do that, 
um, I pray that you continue praying for that wisdom and that foresight because it isn't an easy choice to know which way to go and what to do. We know what the community around us is doing, but we also know what our wider church is telling us. And to find that right balance, it's tough. So again, pray, please. And if there are any needs out there, if there's anybody who really wants a phone call or some contact in any way, don't hesitate. Sometimes my weeks fill up and I'm not able to get to everybody. Sometimes the time just kind of slips away on me. It's never, there's never a shortage of things to do, but I would love it if you're struggling or if there's some need that you have that I can help with. I do ask you to reach out, please. I'm here just a phone call away. If it's just a conversation or a prayer, whatever it might be, just don't hesitate, please. I know it's rough and I know sometimes it can be lonely, so don't hesitate. I, I do want to make that clear. Anyway, I've prattled on enough, so I will close this period of announcements with just one more, in that we have one birthday that is listed here at least. Dave Cox celebrates a birthday, April 26th, so let us say a word of prayer for him. God of grace and mercy, we lift up before you today Dave and ask that you bless him as he celebrates his birthday this week. May it be filled with the blessings of family and friends, and may his year ahead be a good one, O Lord. May he find peace that we all seek. We thank you for his presence in the community and the gifts that he shares, and we do again hope that his year ahead be a good one. And so we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful and safe week. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.